I have dedicated my professional career to the study and control of arthropods. Um, I made this video, or making this video today, um, in part after watching CompTech224's excellent rebuttal of Sir Theist's uh, five, uh, five Ways the Earth Implies Design, or something like that. Um, I'd written a comment on his channel, or on his, uh, on that video, on Comtech's video, because um, I'd looked at, followed uh, the link that Sir Theus provided and went through, I'd seen in the list before, but Hugh Ross's, like, 154 uh, things about the Earth that make it perfect for life and therefore prove that it was designed. And one of the things that caught my attention looking at that list is um, ignoring all of the excellent arguments against the five that Sir Theus picked um, was the vast number of nonsense arguments on there. Things where it's, I, I don't know what, uh, I, I saw his sources, um, he doesn't actually cite specifically where each claim comes from, so I don't know where the source came from. Um, but there, some of it is is just it's ridiculous. It's what I call word salad. It's just a whole bunch of big words kind of thrown together to sound really smart. That's all I can conclude from it. Um, Hugh Ross is a PhD astrophysicist or ast um, astronomer. He should know better than that. Um, but so I thought I'd go through um, as a different side of the whole argument and pick just the five most ridiculous arguments that Hugh Ross makes. Enjoy. So, the timing of continent formation influences the silicate carbonate cycle, um, or disrupts it, apparently, if it's too early or too late. Um, first of all, it's called the carbonate silicate cycle, and what this has to do with is has to do with, it, it's the ratio of, um, of silica carbonate versus the ratio of silicon dioxide and um, carbonate. And um, yeah, this is important for regulating the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere, but it fluctuates greatly um, over time. Um, it goes to one extreme to the other. Uh, how the timing of continent formation has anything to do with this uh, is a mystery to me. Where he, he pulls this one, really pulls this one out of his ass. It doesn't make a bit of sense. Um, again, it comes down to if the continents formed at a different time, the carbonate, silicon, the carbonate silicon, silicate cycle would be different than it is now. Okay, um, it's been different in the past, it'll be different in the future. <laughs> um, biomass to comet infall ratio? Um, I know what all the individual words mean. Um, I don't understand wh when he, why he puts those together um, in any kind of a, a coherent argument. Um, and what that exactly has to do with the amount of greenhouse gases present in the atmosphere. Um, I understand the relationship between biomass and greenhouse gases. Um, how that's a fa how uh, cometary infall, infall has anything to do with that is a complete mystery to me. And again, it it makes like it makes no sense whatsoever. Um, we talk about greenhouse gases, the most significant, if he's talking about the carbon load on the planet, um, the, in, the fossil carbon load, the, um, the carbon sink, the inorganic carbon cycle, dwarfs anything that has to do with biomass anyways. So uh, it, it, the whole thing, it, it, it's, it, it's, quite, it's actually confusing and um, somewhat laughable. Okay, this one's got me stumped. Um, I I know what the iron band formations are, and I know what iron is, and I know what phosphorus is, and I know what cyanobacteria, and I know um, well. I, again, I know all of, I know the meaning of each of the individual words in this argument. What I don't know is what they mean um, when taken together. Um, the iron band formations, if you're if you're not aware, uh, were formed by early photosynthetic organisms at a time when the Earth contained very very little free oxygen um, and the o the acidic oceans at the time were heavy and iron rich as uh, these bacteria released oxygen as a waste product it reacted with the iron in the seawater which precipitated out um, iron oxides 
and then um, in between these are anoxic layers of some kind of a, a silt or whatever, anoxic silts, making these really beautiful banded formations. Um, what I don't, his argument here, I, I have gone over it, looking at it from as many different ways as I can, trying to make some sense out of it. I did a, I did a, a couple of a, several lectures on on the iron band formations in my historical geology class I taught, and I, I can make no sense of what this has to do with anything. I am again, he's making stuff up, um, and what any of it has to do with the uh, increased luminosity of the sun. Um, he throws that in there through a lot of these. It's, um, I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense. If you somebody out there has an explanation, please uh, post it. Post on his response down below. I, I it confuses the hell out of me. So, uh, dual um, H two O formation or dual water molecules. Um, first of all, there is a such there is a thing in um, in polymer chemistry about dual water molecules um, and how they react you know, in solution, in, in polymerization and things like that, if I recall correctly. I, it's been a long time since I've taken O-chem or biochem or in actually any chemistry. However, nothing I could find in any of my climatology resources uh, has anything about how this, in, these have anything to do with raindrop formation. Um, it's, I, there's the major ideas in raindrop formation, there's the Bergeron cycle, and then, uh, oh, I can't remember, there's uh, the well, the ones that involve raindrops forming around um, small insoluble particles in the atmosphere, like that's the seeding rain cloud thing. Nothing about um, dual water molecules that I could find in any of my climatology books. Um, I don't know what... It, it, I think it's another one of these just made-up claims he uh, came up with. The ratio of dual water molecules to single water molecules somehow affecting rainfall. Um, anyway. All right, the last one, number 153. He actually has one more after this in his list, 154, and the arguments are pretty much the same. But it, um, they both deal with the rate th that the rate of tectonic plate movement, uh, the rate of continental drift, essentially, um, is either too much or too little to compensate for changes in the star's luminosity, um, meaning a star, meaning our sun. Uh, this. It, it, it again, it, as I stated in the comment on Comtech 224's video, this is word salad. This makes no sense whatsoever. There's no logic in it. it. Why would how fast the continents move have anything to do with the luminosity of the sun? Um, why would? What would it have to do with? What 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 point? What could you even possibly imagine? Um, the luminosity of the sun somehow being a adversely affecting life on Earth because of the s too slow or too fast rates of tectonic shifting. Um, it's just it's just stuff. He's just making that up. It's um, was the question of why was he? What is this list for? What what's his agenda when making this list? Because the tr it's not. To disseminate truth, okay? He's an he's an astro astronomer. He's got a PhD in astronomy, a legitimate one. Um, he knows better. He knows that a good chunk of what he says here is just made up. It's just it's it's pulled out of his ass. It has no meaning whatsoever. Um, the words real they 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 have no significance. And the things that even the things that do make sense, of course, are just restatements of the if things were different, they'd be different argument that other people have gone into in detail and respond. I've uh, talked about. Um, so that it doesn't it it why he would make this list is ridiculous or is a is a mystery to me. Not ridiculous. And um, the only conclusion that I can draw um, is that. He's some kind of a a, a brilliant, yeah. A, 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 he, he basically creationist. He's fucking with you, okay? He's fucking with your heads. He's trying to see how much junk he can make up that you will um, repeat and, and uh, spread around. I mean, it's it's a it's it's some kind of a grand scheming joke, like a spam email to see how fast it'll go around the world. Um, he's put out this list of of gobbledygook, and he's trying to see how many people, how many of you will spout it as truth. Um, Sir Theist picked, you know, just a few of these arguments. He picked the five, 
I guess, most logical sounding one, but you have to look at the whole list. You can't just pick five out of it. Look at the whole thing. All right, that's all I have. I'll uh, talk to you later. Bye.